Hey guys, today we're going to have a look at a few different hydration techniques to improve and enhance performance. So there's three different ways that you can um, basically hydrate your body. One is just with plain old good water. Uh, the second one is through sports drinks. And the third one, which is a little bit radical, is with intravenous or IV drips, like the ones that you see in the hospitals with the sick people. Um, so basically with water, um, it's great uh, in terms of absorption rates. It gets into your system nice and quickly. Um, but the problem with it is it dilutes your electrolyte levels when you probably already have quite low levels from sweating. Um, it doesn't replace any energy, so it doesn't give you any carbohydrates. Um, it can cause bloating, so it makes you feel a bit worse than you should. And it also um, can stimulate urine output, so it stimulates the kidneys to sort of collect water from the body. And therefore, um, you're not actually retaining a lot of water in the first place. So when you actually drink the water, you want it to go to your cells and not straight to your kidneys um, to be flushed down the toilet. So um, just a few different terms with water or with fluids in general. Um, dehydration is actually the process of losing water. So you go from adequate hydration to hypohydration. Hypohydration is too little fluid. Hyperhydration is too much fluid. And then you've got euhydration, which is just the right amount. Um, then you've got an, ex, um, an extremely rare case of <laughs> sorry, hyponatremia, where um, it's a condition where you have excessive water consumption um, and then you have dangerously low levels of sodium in the blood. So um, in effect, you can basically drown yourself with um, too much liquid intake. Um, there's been a few classic cases on the Kokoda Trail of this condition where um, it's been quite humid conditions. The body hasn't um, sweated a lot of the water out, um, although the salts have come out and then the person is sort of um, rehydrated with water but not replenished, replenished any of the salts and um, they've basically killed themselves by overconsumption of fluids. Um, so better option is sports drinks. It's absorbed as quickly as water, but it retains the hydration effect um, and it replenishes lost fuels and electrolytes. So just a little note um, before I go on down the bottom of the screen in the pink, it says electrolytes and mineral salts such as sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium and chloride. Um, and they basically assist with neural impulses and they promote fluid retention. Um, but the problem is that they get uh, lost through sweat. So when you start to exercise and you sweat, um, if you were brave enough to taste your sweat, you'd find that it tastes salty and that's those salts coming through. So the more you lose, um, the more issues that you have with uh, neural impulses um, firing, which is why muscle contractions reduce and um, also your, um, I suppose your thought clarity reduces as well. So a whole range of things become impaired if you lose too many salts. So you want to replace them as well as glucose and water. Um, so the three different types of drinks that you can have are um, isotonic drinks, and that's the main brand of sports drinks, so your Gatorades, Powerades, that sort of thing. Um, and they're used for rehydration and refueling. And the reason being is they have a, what we call a similar osmolality to the body. So basically you have um, a certain amount of particles of glucose and salts and whatever else um, per, um, I suppose, litre of water in your body. Um, and the sports drinks sort of mimic uh, that concentration. So they have about four to eight percent glucose and about 10 to 25 millimoles um, of electrolytes per liter. And that is quite similar to your um, body's fluid makeup, which is why um, it works so well to rehydrate and refuel. Um, then you've got hypotonic drinks. So remember the hypo, O for low, um, it means that it's got a lower osmolality, so it's less than 8% glucose and about 1 to 25 millimoles of electrolytes per litre. An example of that is water or um, really watered down um, uh, sports drink mix. So you can get the powders, the powder form, and you can mix it up yourself so you can make a really, really low version of that. Um, and that's much better for um, rehydration rather than refueling. Um, and then you've got hypertonic drinks, which um, are basically used for refueling. Anything, or well, the scientists have said, anything that's above 8% um, osmolality, so um, 8% of glucose, for example, 
it's just too much and it reduces the absorption. Um, so um, in effect, it's not really helping with rehydration. It's actually just helping with refueling. So an example of this could be fruit juice. Um, and then you've got what we call intravenous drip. So this is a case of where um, a, an insertion is made into the athlete's uh, veins and um, they absorb the water that way. They're not actually taking it orally or through their mouth. Um, so um, the, they've sort of found that it doesn't really have much of an effect when it comes to mild dehydration. So if I was to go for a jog and then have an intravenous drip inserted, and um, gave me the same amount of fluids as the uh, me taking a sports drink, for example, they would probably find it didn't really do me much good um, for all the effort that it takes to insert a drip. Um, whereas um, someone who has suffered severe dehydration, so for example at the end of the Hawaiian triathlon, where they're all shaky and they don't have much water and their muscles are overheating, um, or someone who is actually unconscious from um, heat exhaustion, um, where, they, where they can't actually drink, those sort of situations are where intravenous drip are um, quite useful. They also um, obviously don't cause bloating because it's not going directly to the stomach, it's actually going through the bloodstream. But there are problems with that as well, ones that I won't go into, but um, basically it's, it's been banned by the, the, um, the World Anti-Doping Agency and the AFL, um, so the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, they have said that uh, they don't want any athletes to undergo any intravenous, um, I suppose, any intravenous drips of any substance, unless it's for medical purposes within the hospital, um, but certainly not during an event. Um, and the AFL, I think it was Brisbane Lions, um, at one stage used it um, at half time in their change rooms. Um, and since then, the AFL sort of frowned upon it. Um, I, I believe more so because it gives a negative in image to young athletes rather than actually being um, a medical risk to players. But I mean, at the end of the day, when you're inserting things like intravenous strips, that's medical equipment that you know you're you're not in a in a hospital. You have to worry about hygiene and needles and that sort of thing. So it's probably not the safest practice anyway. Um, at the end of the day, for regular sports, oral hydration or just drinking is probably the best. Um, now, in terms of recovery, um, there are some hydration recommendations. Um, this is taken from the sports dietitian's um, website. So basically they're saying a lot of fluid can be lost during exercise because of sweat. Um, and your fluids should be replaced at 125 to 150% of what you've lost. So basically if you lose, so you'd have to weigh yourself before and after your event and say you'd lost a kilo, um, that's generally probably because of um, sweating. So that's a kilo is a thousand mils, um, 125 to 150% of that is 1250 or 1500 mils. So you drink over and above what your weight loss was. And that has to be within the two to six hours following your event um, because you don't want to risk um, dehydration after the event either. All right, so just in summary, um, we've got three different options for hydration. So you've got water, um, the sports drinks or the IV drips. And then obviously at recovery, like I just mentioned, you want to make sure that you um, consume more than what you would have um, lost during the event. So you want to consume 125 to 150% of what you lost. All right. Thanks for watching.